Sapphires are one of the most precious gemstones out there. They come in a rainbow of colors, they're super hard, and they can stand up to daily wear as jewelry. They're even durable enough that we use them in industrial applications. Plus, we can find them right here near our studios in Montana. Which is one reason why they are the first item in our new SciShow Rocks Box subscription. Stick around to the end to learn more about that. But the really neat thing about Montana Sapphires is that there is a big mystery surrounding these pretty little stones. Even though we know where to find them, researchers have no clue where most of them originally came from. So to start out, there are two basic kinds of mineral deposits, primary and alluvial. Primary is what you picture when you think of a miner with a pickaxe and TNT blowing holes in the sides of mountains and bringing up carts full of precious minerals or ores. It basically just means that the minerals are in the same spot where they formed, more or less. Meanwhile, mining from an alluvial deposit of minerals is more like a prospector panning for gold in a river, just on a way, way bigger scale. Alluvial deposits are formed when your fancy desirable mineral is washed downstream by a river and collects in one location. They can also be referred to as placer deposits or placer deposits since they were placed there. These alluvial sapphires are found in a few places in Montana, including Rock Creek, Dry Cottonwood Creek, and the Missouri River deposits. But we don't know for sure where they eroded from. And while you'd think this would just be a matter of tracing the rivers upstream, you would be wrong. See, researchers are pretty sure that these deposits aren't even the first time these sapphires have been moved by erosion. It's likely that they've been knocked around the landscape for upwards of two million years. So while the investigation is ongoing, there's definitely a possibility that the original source vein for these Montana sapphires has completely washed away. However, not all of Montana's sapphires are alluvial. There's one place called Yogo Gulch that has primary deposits of sapphires, which are aptly called Yogo Yogo Sapphires, one of the very first stones I ever bought for my wife. This cache dates back to more than a hundred years ago, when a prospector was searching for gold in the area. He didn't manage to get all that much, but he did find a bunch of odd light blue stones, which turned out to be sapphires. Mining began in the area in the tail end of the 19th century, but petered off in the early 20th century. See, while Yogo Gold Sapphires are pretty, they're often not great as jewelry-grade gemstones. Most tend to be smaller than a carat, so for most of the mine's operation, the sapphires they sold went towards watchmaking rather than jewelry. Because of both some strings of bad luck and encroaching competition from synthetic sapphires, Yogo Gulch ended up ceasing mining operations in the late 1920s. Over the ensuing decades, the mine has traded hands and restarted production a few times, most recently in 2021, which is exciting news for fans of these particular stones. But what makes these sapphires so special? Sapphires are a type of corundum, which is made of aluminum and oxygen. The color of the stone is determined by other things in the stone, like gallium, iron, titanium, and other things. Rubies are also corundums, so they're basically identical to sapphires chemically. We just call them a different name because, honestly, it's mostly marketing. Corundums can form in two ways, either directly from the hardening of melted rock underground or through the later transformations of those hardened materials. Research supports the idea that alluvial Montana sapphires took the latter route, while the Yogo sapphires are more likely formed right from the hardening rock, though there's still some debate there too. However, they formed. There's a quirk of their geochemistry that makes these stones special. Yogo sapphires have traces of titanium and magnesium. And while the alluvial sapphires are similar in some ways to those found in Colombia and Myanmar, they're still distinct in the ratio of iron, magnesium, and gallium, which gives them a unique array of colors found in few other places in the world. And if you sign up for our new SciShow Rocksbox subscription, you'll get one of each of these Montana sapphires. The Rocksbox delivery will include one Yogo sapphire, one sapphire from the Missouri River, and a tumbled sapphire from either the Missouri River or Rock Creek. And then each month, a new rock or fossil will arrive in your mailbox. And those of you who subscribe early will be members of the SciShow Rocks Box Founders Club with exclusive access to Founders Club merch. To get started on your SciShow Mineral Collection like me, visit scishow.rocks for all of the details.